All right, so we're here heading back to chapter three. So I've mentioned this a few times and we got to take a look at it because um, chapter seven dealt with um, uh, creating items and we got to take a look at how to create a sales tax item. Chapter two, we got to take a look at how to use the sales tax item in the form, right? All you need to do is um, create an invoice and let sh and, and let QuickBooks know, is this going to be a taxable item? And if so, then you're going to set the tax at the bottom, all right? And um, so what this does is here, it allows you, uh, so chapter three is basically going to teach you how to set up your sales tax and also how to create and collect and um, well chapter four was to pay it. Um, so we're gonna take a quick glimpse and review this because it's very important that you know it. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things that we're gonna be taking a look at is how to set up your sales tax. So if you remember from the very, 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 very beginning um, of the um, chapter 12, we got to take a look at how to go through the interview and, um, you know, you get that question where it asks you, do you sell, do you charge sales tax? And in this case, yes, we do. Okay. So uh, if you remember how to set preferences, right, that's the number one thing you're going to do. So there's two ways you can get there. You can either go ahead and go click on the manage sales tax right here at the top. Oh, no. Ugh, sorry. Um, sale Manage sales tax right here at the top of the window. And here you can actually go ahead and manage your sales tax. Pretty straightforward, right? You can go ahead and select right here um, that you want to um, set up your sales tax. You can do so by clicking on um, set up your sales tax, okay? So sales tax uh, preferences right here. Or you could go to your preferences, uh, edit preferences menu, and go all the way down to sales tax. Sales, sales, sales tax. Uh, make sure you're on company. And um, so if you click on sales tax preferences, it's going to take you to this exact window right here. Okay, so there's two ways to be able to get there. All right, and this is usually what you have to, um, you should actually set this up before anything, before you even start even um, taking care of your sales process. So um, that's why I was, I was telling you earlier that um, they should have mentioned this in chapter two because you're using sales tax, right? You're charging your customers and you're charging them based on sales tax. So this should be actually introduced either in chapter, chapter, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of mix, mix, max, mix, match, um, information. And, um, notice that you're dealing with sales tax in three chapters. You're dealing in chapter three, chapter four, and chapter, um, chapter, uh, chapter 12. They should just create a separate chapter. They should make this chapter, uh, you know, chapter, chapter, the chapter in between chapter one and chapter two. So before the customers and after the intro, okay? Because sales tax is so important, especially if you are selling um, a product. Um, and, you know, it, setting it up is very important too because in order for you to facilitate or, or even to collect the sales tax, you have to set it up in the first place. So that's why they need to create like either a subchapter or some kind of subheading that's dedicated to just sales tax, okay? So with that being said, here we are at sales tax and what do we need to do to um, set up the preferences here? So of course, the first thing is, do you, do you charge sales tax? Yes, we already established that, right? Because we're, we are a legitimate store, we have two store locations, and that means we are subject to have to collect sales tax for the California government, okay? So with that being said, here we are, we're gonna take a look at the questions here. So here, select your sales tax items. So again, we had to create our sales tax items. If you remember in chapter seven, um, we had to create specific 
tax items because, again, every state and every county has their individual taxes. You're being taxed twice at the state level and at the county level, all right? Um, some places, um, especially if you do online um, services, I know that they only charge state tax. They don't charge the county tax because they don't know where you will, you know, where they're shipping to. Some other places differ too, where their tax is, uh, you know, it's just based on wherever it's being shipped to. But of course, because we're also dealing with an in-store location, we also need to set up a specific tax because we have two locations. We have Contra Costa and we have Santa Clara. All right. And because we have those two taxes and they're paying it to one local um, agency, they only have to have those two. But again, we, we also got to take a look at how to create the sales tax item in the first place and then group them together to be able to uh, administer one sales tax that provides for the state and it provides for the county. So again, you can set that up by adding your sales tax items by creating it here. And we all know how to do that through the um, items list. Okay. And then other things that you should know too is that it just says, what is your most common sales tax item? So in, in this case, um, you, 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 don't, you don't have to differentiate because we have two locations. But let's say your, your first store that you established was in fact Contra Costa, then place it there, all right? Or if your first location was in San Jose, then Santa Clara County is going to be um, your tax that you most commonly use. So that means every time you open up an invoice or create one, and you, um, it's going to automatically state this amount right here. Unless you assign a particular county or... Uh, uh, so when we, when we do... Um, when we associate each uh, customer, right, we associate it with them a class, then it's going to automatically pull up this information right here because if they belong to San Jose, you're definitely going to charge them um, the Santa Clara tax. You wouldn't charge them otherwise, right? Or if, uh, same, thing, same thing with the other store location. If this uh, person was, uh, was in Walnut Creek, then you would charge them at the Contra Costa sales tax, that county. All right. So with that being said, then, you know, you're just going to have to define, well, which one is your most uh, prominent one? Because then it's going to, um, and for every sales receipt or for every um, sales form, it will automatically uh, default to that setting. So in this case, I'm going to do, con uh, I'm going to do um, Santa Clara because I'm going to say maybe San Jose is my uh, primary or my main um, store location. Okay. And of course, you can create those items again through the item list. So then the next thing is going to be assigning sales tax codes. So we talked about this, right? We talked about what sales tax codes are. Sales tax codes are uh, going to be um, anything that is dealt with... Um, you know, uh, particular products, right? For example, a grocery store, right? You can assign specific tax taxes on products, right? Anything that is non is a, is not a non perishable is going to be considered a taxable item. So any product such as, uh, you know, um, household goods or household supplies, paper, things that are you know, that, that, that are not perishable, okay? Those are going to be taxed where your foods that you sell, right, they have that tax-exempt um, uh, little uh, thing there. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be considered um, a tax code. And in this case, we have, we have a couple, right? We have about five of them. We have, um, uh, we have government, non-for-profit, um, OOS, which is out of state, we have also have services. And then we have regular products as well, and they're going to be taxed at for sure. 
So this one is is um, assigning specific items. So then every time you uh, create uh, specific items or you, uh, um, what do you call it? that you sell that item, it's going to associate, well, what is going to be taxed and what is not going to be taxed. So as you can see here, um, which ones are taxable items and which ones are non-taxable, okay? Some can be filled. If you don't have a non-taxable item, then you don't need to fill this in, okay? Okay. So once you've done that and you figured that out, then the next section here says that um, identify taxable um um, items as T uh, for taxable when printing. Okay, so this is dealing with, um, uh, like if you see on a sales item, a sales receipt, it, it gives you that little, you know, dash. Um, it depends on your store too. Some of them associate it with like, um, this is line, line item A. Line item A's are all taxable items. Line item B's are non-taxable, things like that. Every store is going to have some kind of um, some kind of uh, way to tell whether your items are taxable or not. Okay. Once you establish that, then the next one is when do you owe sales tax? Sales tax. Okay. So this is in regards to making your payments. So um, of course, with that idea, in order to be able to do that, you're going to have to go through your manage. Um, your managed sales tax sex, uh, area, okay? You need to go find the local agency that you're making payments to. And again, we talked about this as well. Most, most common nowadays, they don't accept checks anymore. They want electronically fund, uh, funds transfer. They want, to, they want to collect it immediately right then and there. So here's your little um, section here where you can actually tailor and set reminders um, for when you need to make your payment for sales tax, okay? So again, um, as of in, uh, invoice date or um, upon um, receipt of payment. So it's up to you what you want to do. When do you owe the sales tax? So um, it's, you know, this is optional. Again, um, if you, uh, when you're using QuickBooks, oftentimes it's automatically defaulted to the accrual basis. Okay. So then now the next question is, when do you want to make those payments? So do you pay it every month? Do you pay it every quarterly or do you pay it every annually? Now, if you're a company that makes a lot of uh, sales, ideally, you don't want to owe the money. So your best bet is to do it every month. But if you are a person, uh, if your company does not do that many, um, uh, sell, sell that many products, then you can you're safe you're safe with every quarterly or every annually, all right. But that's also based on your your company as well. Um, you know, is it big? Is it small? Um, and et cetera, et cetera. How do you, can you afford to make the payments? So again, the money that the customers give you, a portion of that money needs to be separated because it doesn't belong to you. And if you collect it and you assume and uh, per to our, like you um, again, when we're looking at sales tax, right? You're not given the selling price and then the separate tax on the side. You're given as a wad of cash, right? And when you enter it in as a transaction, what you're doing is you're separating it. But however, you're not paying it yet. You're creating a liability because you're owing the government. So at the end of the month, that's when you have to make sure that you have enough money to go ahead and pay you, the government their money because you can't, there's penalties and a lot of th uh, things um, that come to it if you, if you don't make payments to your um, sales tax agent. So again, I'm gonna click okay. All right, and now that we've set our preferences, now here we're back at our managed um, sales tax, okay? So here, here's a few things that you wanna do. Do you wanna make your payment to a sales tax, which we got to take a look at uh, last time. But last time when we got to, when we did that, it was very quick. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and go a little slower. So it has said here, uh, prepare your um, sales tax it forms. So again, 
we can take a look at that um, the sales tax form. So here's your sales tax liability. This is all the taxes that you owe so far. Uh, right now, I owe I owe six hundred and nine dollars. Okay. Okay, I see that. Yep. All right, and that's your sales tax liability report. All right. So of course, um, every time you look at that. You know, that just tells you, oh, how much money do you actually owe? Do you have enough? Can you write a check to it or can you transfer the money for it? Or a sales tax revenue um, summary, so another report. Um, it's a, yeah, anyways. So once we take a look at that and we make our monthly payments, right, you just go ahead and click that um, that uh, pay, um, pay sales tax feature. Other than that, you could look at your sales, view your sales tax item, right? Maybe double check your sales tax uh, items or if you want to view your sales tax code items, whatever it is. Or even adjust the sales tax due date. You determine it there. But if you remember, if I click this sit, um, pay my sales tax, right? Of course, you're going to have to enter this in as um, your, your agency. You have to, to go ahead and determine who you're making this payment to and once you do that then you're going to go ahead and do an electronic tra funds transfer so remember this right we're paying it directly out of our account and we're going to pay it from our checking account and here what taxes are you paying i'm paying the um santa clara tax and i'm also paying the contra costa uh, sales tax so as you can see right there um and we're making a payment to the sales uh, for this um, state board of equalization, all right, for the grand total of the six hundred and uh, I'm sorry, five hundred and nine dollars. All right. Once we take a look at this and we verify that this is all true, um, again, if you do have any sales returns that have to do with taxes, it should take it out immediately. Or in this case, they never paid sales tax in the first place. So think of it that way. Therefore, okay. when you revert the uh, the uh, the credit memo, you're it's reverting that sales tax as well. So with that being said, now it says pay all sales tax. So you can actually choose which one you want to make payments to. Um, so if I make a payment to all three accounts, then I'm making a full payment of five hundred and nine dollars, and then I verify that it is to the um to the uh, board of, equaliza of equalization, okay? And I click okay. All right, once I get that beep of approval, it has been done. And the way I can verify that is by going to my checking account because it should say that I made a payment to my tax. So um, as I've mentioned before, it will show right here saying I made a tax payment. Okay, tax payment. All right. Okay. So again, um, the way that it, it knows that it's sending it to the state of uh, state of equalization is because when we set up our um, sales tax item, the first thing it says that what agency are we sending this money to? So again, that's going to be a vendor that we have to set up, and all that's going to be in place in the vendor section, if you remember. We got to set up their account number. We got to set up, or um, I mean, our account number with them. We have to set up all that information that's in regards to that particular organization. Okay. So with that being said, um, that's it for um, the sales tax section right there. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and yes. Okay. Okay, last but not least is going to be your sales report. Okay, so of course with sales report, those are going to be the, the, you know, it's going to be whatever it is that you want to make it to be. Um, depending on like whether it's, pre, uh, you know, answering a question that you want to, uh, to know. Okay. Um, in regards to sales. So you could say, well, what are my sales for this month? Or what are my sales for this week? Then you're going to go, you're going to simply go to your, um, your top of the menu right here. 
um, at reports and you're going to go ahead and highlight that little section called sales. All right. And it's going to give you a drop down menu of the sales uh, reports that you can create. So as you can see, there's not that many. There's only a few. So you can do sale by customer summary, sale by uh, customer details. So the difference between a summary and a detail is, okay, so a summary is just going to give you an overall amount of the um, things that you sold to certain people, right? No details. Where the detailed one is going to give you a full, um, you know, detailed um, information about the sales. So if I do customer details, if I bring this one up, it pulls down each person, each invoice, and of course you could double click, you can um, click on the invoice. If I were to double click that invoice, it shows to me what that invoice was. So this one's a little, of course, more detail. That's the purpose of it, right? It gives more than just what the customer owes you. Okay. Um, other than that, so you can be able to look at how many sales who, or you could even see who is your best customer or who's, who's the one that's giving you more money in a sense. Okay. Other things that you could do is you could even look at sales by item. Okay. Not by, I don't want to do, um, by summary. I, I want to do, uh, detail. So, um, sales by item detail. So here is a list of all the products that I sell in um, my in my store, right? I sell I sell um, photo sessions, photo paper. I sell other things. Um, I have financial charges as well. So again, this is just only reflecting these kind of dates, right? If you want to know a lot more in details and you want to go ahead and modify it by selecting all. And when I click select all, now it's making my list more expansive because I'm taking in a fact that I want to look at everything that happened as far as back to when I started using QuickBooks. So as you can see here, I, I sell that. I sell an SR, a camera SR32. Um, I sell a case for it. Did you know that? I sell picture frames. I sell camera lenses. Okay. I even sell parts such as photo paper. Okay. I even do premium um, photo packages. So again, this gives you a list of all the sales up to date for the time that you want it. All right. And when we dive into chapter six, we're going to be able to modify it so that we can take a look at a specific report scaled based upon on a specific date and time. Okay, so there you go. There you can you can find the details in the sales report based on item right here. What are the items that you sell and um, how much did you sell of it? All right. Other sales reports that we have here is sales by rep. So again, we have only one, uh, we have two representatives. We have um, Mike Mazowski and we have um, Miss uh, Kitty Reynolds. So we have two employees. So you can do, you can check out um, by who, which customer uh, provides uh, the sales rep information. So this is in case, you know, if you do have commissions, right? And you give commissions based on, um, who does the most sales, then there you go. You can take a look at this information and determine who made the most sales, all right? And then we'll talk about graphs in Chapter 6, so tomorrow, okay? But other than that, that is pretty much it. If sales isn't your department, then th there's no need for you to make any of these reports. It's not going to be helpful or useful to you, all right? So now that we went over that, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this class. So any questions in regards to chapter three? No, I don't think so. No, perfect. Let's go ahead and go over the review questions and call it a day. All right, so number one, customer statements. Okay, so it's asking what does it do?
It is a correct. It is. Um, it provides a summary of all account uh, receivable um, activity uh, for a customer. Yes. Pretty straightforward. Number two. All right. Which of the following? options um does is not available on the available credit window so remember when we talked about when we uh, create our credit memo what are the three options that they allow you to do yes you cannot use it as a form of payment okay because that's yeah no you can't do that you can either you know the the three options are pretty clear right you either give a refund you either reduce the invoice um or you can retain it as a, a future credit for another purchase but you cannot apply it as a payment all right number three okay um what is the best way to write off a bad debt. Which answer? Which answer did you choose? I, I'm, I'm thinking out loud. So oh, said, okay. You don't, you don't want to delete it. So. <laughs> okay. D. Um, D. Any of uh, the above? Uh, uh, B, sorry. Oh, B as in boy. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yes. Um, the best way to write off a bad debt is, in fact, you are going to create a cre credit memo using the bad debt item and then apply it to the invoice. Yes. Yes, that is how you do it. You don't just go in there and delete the um, invoice because then that causes problems there too. All right. Uh, let me see what C says. Create a credit memo for the amount of past due invoices and then uh, retain them as an available credit. Why would you give your customer an, a credit if they didn't make a payment to you in the first place? Right, because that's an amount that you would owe them. Exactly. They, they could use. Exactly. No, that C is absolutely wrong. And D, any of the above, obviously, we already marked that C is absolutely wrong. And we know that A is you never delete anything in, in your QuickBooks. Right. Never. Okay. So number four says here, in which of the following um, statements, which, um, oh, okay, sorry. Would you create a credit memo? So which of the following situations, excuse me, would you create a credit memo? Oh, that's D. D, all of the above. Yes, okay. So you would definitely need to create one if you're going to record a cancellation, right? If they've, if they've already, if they, they called you last minute to cancel the product and you've already, uh, you know, um, you know, you already had someone set out to do it, you need to undo it, all right? So good. Cancellation is this. Uh, B says that a customer uh, returns... Um, what is that? Um, merchandise um, and then wants a refund. Yes. Yes. That's the that's the main purpose of what a credit memo does. And then lastly, a credit request, I mean, a customer re um, requests a refund. Yes. All of the above is true. All right. Number five. Last but not least. Okay. The credit memo number should be. Also. Yes. Yes. Now, that's just a, that's just that's their recommendation. It, you don't have to do it. Um, that's I why they confused. yeah they, they the, the the word here that you want to uh, tread lightly on is should. Okay. So um, in context, um, yes, that's what they recommend you to do. Just so then they keep you they they keep you organized. But again, you can use any letter. 
all right? It doesn't have to be a C. C is just, you know, easier so you know that it's a credit, right? But if you're writing a bad debt, you don't want to associate a credit with a bad debt. You want to, you know, in that case, I would use B or D, right? Uh, mm -hmm. B, B for bad debt or D for debt. Um, uh, R for a refund. Make sense? Whatever, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be what it stands for, all right? But again, that's what they recommend you to do. So yes, you should be the uh, original um, invoice um, number followed by a C. All right. Okay, so good job. All right. So right now it's it's uh, roughly almost four o'clock. Oh, it is almost it is four. So I'm gonna let you go an hour early. So go ahead and take the time to study whatever you need to take a st to study for tomorrow. It's going to be chapter five and chapter six because chapter five is actually very, very, very short sweet and simple and chapter six i'm only going to go over the most important reports that exist so other than that if you don't have any other extra questions you are free to go okay thank you